So Friday the 13th Part 3, uh, 3D, came out in 1982, and obviously the hook and the catch is that this would be the first one, I think the only, that would be in 3D, or at least marketed as, like, you know, 3D, that you need to, you know, mandatorily watch it in 3D. And begins with Friday the 13th, so our 1 through 12, alive. 3D, you know, because it would be cool. However, in doing so, since I don't have 3D glasses, or you know, the, the ones that you get in the box that don't work properly, so most people watching this will just see weird close ups of popcorn and baseball bats and fucking I don't know anything. It is, I found it to be quite hilarious, honestly. This is one thing with this is an old guy like holding something like in front of you, like, look, hey, look, 3D, you know, it's like, okay, I get it. It's Uh, so this was the first Friday 13 film that used the iconic hockey mask, which has been in every sequel since. Funny thing about the hockey mask, I find it funny that when this, you know, the, when they introduce it, there's that scene where he walks up and kills that one girl with the arrow in 3D. And I find it funny how it's just so dismissive how they, they like introduce it. I remember watching this first time, even now, second viewing. I'm watching, it's like, okay, me on popcorn, and oh, there he is. And it's like, oh wait, there's the hockey mask. <laughs> It seems so dismissive of it. Like, I didn't even notice it. Obviously, you know, watching it out, you will, but it was just kind of like, oh, yeah. They just kind of threw this together. Sack hat thing was taken. It was just using a hockey mask, you know? And I just find it funny that it was super just kind of whatever dismissive about it. Kind of found out to be kind of just a bit hilarious. The house, barn, and lake were all purpose built on location. The man made lake wasn't properly sealed, and the water drained into a sword during the first few weeks of filming. Which, so yeah, this is the first sequel that isn't just set in the counselor thing the camps and it's the first one that he doesn't go specifically towards camp counselors anymore because apparently they decided to change the script and say you know he's gonna kill everyone not just you know camp counselors now he's going to kill everyone his goddamn way which is cool again if you keep killing counselors for like 11 movies that's gonna be very boring again but changing it up this kind of quick is like oh okay i guess camp counselors things just kind of gone now which again data mine would have been really boring but i just thought it was funny okay let's just switch to change our gears and he, let's just kill everyone in, in his way basically the original plan for the film was to involve amy still Jenny from the previous movie being confined to a psychiatric hospital suffering from the trauma inflicting on her ordeal with Jason she eventually finds out that you know intending on a revenge he has tracked her down and because the murder to stop and other patients in the hospital still ultimately declined the offer due to her being busy with other series and other projects but I've said that she thinks she would have accepted it and kind of regret it so yeah when I'm read I'm gonna be this I'm thinking of like Halloween you know H2O anyone sounds very similar but yeah this would have been again a a different take different direction that would have been this sort of linear sort of well-known like okay he's gonna go kill a bunch of people it may be entertaining from time to time but the third one's kind of you know roughly the same thing so to prevent the film's flat from being leaked production used a fake name crystal japan for a david bowie song this began an on again and off again tradition giving the prior films a david bowie song during the filming <laughs> that's funny crystal japan i mean okay it's just kind of hilarious let's name this film david bowie song why not though although it appears that sunny and warm the film was shot during january February winter. Several nights were trimmed in order to conceal the actor's visible breathing impairment on screen. I mean, that's most cases, right? If you're shooting like in the Vancouver area, I mean, oh, it was a shoot. I don't know where this shot. I'm gonna assume it's somewhere cold as fuck. But obviously, January, February, around that time, generally around the whole world, it's very cold. It's winter time. Not, not here in California, but it's winter time. It's, it gets very cold, and it's like you gotta cover that shit because it's supposedly camp summertime. And supposedly days after the first couple of movies, well, the second movie. This is, I think, a day after, and then that time. By, by the way jason has recovered from a wound from a wound from his back that doesn't begin to make any sense and he's a bit bigger or chunkier he has like a bigger back that doesn't make sense either but this is the series former artist richard brooker was chosen to play jason simply because steve minor needed a big man for the role being six feet three inches tall so yeah he looks very bulk his back looked fucking like i don't know man his back looked crazy i remember watching this and being like his back looks a bit crazy i'm not gonna lie it looks kind of ridiculous if i'm being honest the film's 3d effects supervisor is responsible for coming up with the Jason trademark hockey mask. Sat off, always cut the bag with him full of hockey gear on the set because he was an avid hockey fan. While testing potential masks for the Jason, pulled out a Detroit Red Wings mask for the test. He might have loved the look and after making some, uh, you know, different takes and to the mask, he started using the film. So yeah, Martin J. Sat off. This guy is the reason as to why we got, you know, the iconic mask. And, you know, it's very simple when you look at it, especially to Myers and I, not Freddy, but like compared to Myers, it's a very simple mask. It's just a hockey mask with marks on there. It's nothing too hard, you know, to make, which is, you know, what's great about it. Part 3, they moved production from Connecticut to California. They get close to the Hollywood expertise needed for a film that 
Wars attempted revitalize 3D. They told the East Coast based Steve if you want to play Jason as he did for the most part, you gotta pay for his own welfare out in California. He objected, so parts of his cast to Richard Brooker, former English artist who would perform all of his stunts, appearing physically intimidating and in, you know in nature and stature. Movies, I don't know, some do this, some do. They where they go to like international locations and US locations, most of the time it's just like one or two or like a couple. And in this case, they move from like not across the country, but technically across the country, right? Connecticut to California is very far, but you know, they had to do that. The 3D version contains a title card, not seeing 2D home video releases for like obvious reasons. But yeah, speaking of 3D, uh, even so, there I've seen some images of 3D with the 3D glasses, and it doesn't even work right. It looks weird. You see red and splits of 3D, but it's still kind of you see two images from what I've seen. So, and there's been some people who've made their own 3D glasses and make it look like 3D. So, I, I want to see this movie in 3D, honestly. Hopefully, that new box set, which god, it looks so cool, it had a cool poster and everything, and like more stuff, more behind the scenes stuff. It looks so goddamn cool. Don't have the money for it, but hopefully, they fix the 3D in that, or else, kind of be with some money. But I want to see this movie in 3D to see how you know how it looks. So, Chris or Christine, the main girl, the final girl, had a passing counter with Jason, and it was intended to imply sexual assault. The series meant to conclude with this entry. The writers want an audience to be pleased with Jason's demise, reasoning that if he was portrayed as a rapist, they have no interest to in see him coming back. It was ultimately decided it was way too dark of a direction to take the character. Those elements were removed from the film. So yeah, oh God, this is again continuity. This is probably the worst continuity for a series or franchise. Apparently, this girl Christine was near a lake shore. She met Jason. Problem with that is Jason shouldn't be goddamn alive. And when the fuck did she see this this version of Jason? Apparently, she was very young too. And despite removing the sexual assault and rapist thing, it is was kind of implied that he wanted to do something to her in the flashback. So I mean, it wasn't as to you know you know that dark. But assaulting her and her when she was young, that was just kind of okay. When was this in the timeline between 1958 and 1984? <sighs> Again, I try not to think about it in this series in general. So I'm not just trying not to think about that. The movie made over 36 million with a budget of four million, way more than the sequel. I'm assuming the extra you know dollar dollar bills is due to 3D and 3D was I'm gonna assume way expensive. It still is, but yeah, with 3D they added a lot more money to that. So and you know four million back in the day, I just double it to eight million now. But yeah, it, it was not cheap to making the movie 3D basically. So it says here why they decided to do in 3D. They needed an advertising gimmick now that audience has caught on to their storytelling formula. And two months after the release part two, a 3D comedy western from Spain called Coming at Ya made a stunning for the time 12 million dollars, mostly due to the novelty that it was used with 3D. Since Friday 13 was built around stabbing instruments, outward on screen in 3D version seemed natural. So part three became the first Paramount film 3D since 1956, as the first ever 3D film to receive wide theatrical release from major Hollywood studio. 3D theaters in the past demanded 3D films only played on limited screens, which I get. Not a lot of people are fans of 3D. I only like 3D movies when it's kind of re like relevant, like Avatar in 2009. I mean, I get as to why I would be excited to see that movie in 3D because it's like new technology and stuff like that. Friday 13 part three, now I would, but I don't know. If I were, you know, teenager back in 1982 or something, and this movie is after 3D, but like, that's some bullshit. The fuck? I'm gonna see this shit in 3D. But now I do, because I want to see how it actually looks with popcorn popping in my face and everything. So it was estimated that Paramount was forced to spend between 8 to 10 million to actually get part 3 in theaters. That's because they ended up making it, supplying it, and installing the individual license to silver screens required to project part 3 in all of 1,079 theaters, which show the film opened weekend on August 1982. Damn. Yeah, it's something I never realized about like I guess the industry the studios they have to like pump out a lot of money just to get it in theaters and and if they don't make that money back they're, they're pretty much fucked like uh justice league over 100 million even though that the budget was over 300 million man they need to make at least a billion for profit and to make the money back the budget back so yeah i just i don't know that's something about the industry just never knew about okay so last thing i'll mention is the ending but so for the original ending in this trivia christine or chris awakens in a canoe or canoe canal canoe canal canoe i'm gonna say canoe on crystal like after the events of the previous evening after a lone survivor she rose into you know back on shore begins walking towards the house with the exhaust demeanor she suddenly hears a noise from the house and thinks it's rick begins to run the porch of the house once she arrives at the front of the door and suddenly bursts in and jason emerges to the surprise of chris jason grabs her by the hair chops her head off with the machete these images shown in the look of jason's voice as well which was the mass designed by effects artist uh, stan winston after that decision was made to you know, excise his original ending the look of jason was completely overhauled to what we now see in the film today so that would have been a pretty dark ending just killing our main final girl and with jason living at the end but yeah i mean from thought here and the truth said that it was meant to end it well never mind they, they backpedal on that but 
I mean, Final Girl dying to Jason, that would have been, that would have left audiences kind of been like, yay, m more sequels, but no, main girl dies. But the ending's always the same. And then again, they made the same film <sighs> a third time, but this time it was actually fucking decent. Actually, I like this movie quite a bit, actually, mainly because of 3D, but they actually made a decent movie during the third time. Third time's with the charm. So yeah, I guess that's just the last fact. Let's get on with the actual film. It opens up with a fun recap. It opens with a goddamn recap. Yeah, that, like five, six minutes, whatever. Jason has healed. He goes around killing people. Not in Crown Campus to Lake no more. He decides to kill people everywhere. Well, that's how we meet our characters. We meet, God, a bunch of forgettable characters. A smoke crack couple. But mainly Shelby. Shelly or Shelby? Shelly. I don't say Shelly. And Christine, our main girl. Her boyfriend, Rick. And the biker gang, I want to mention. So Shelly. Is his name Shelly? I'm going to say it's Shelly. Yeah, whatever. Just correct me in the comments. But Shelly, he, his arc. Okay, there's an actual arc. He's that person that wants to, you know, pretend to be dead. So boy, he is the arc of boy who cried wolf. He keeps pretending to die and get killed and pretending to die because he has these infatuation with, you know, prosthetic fake blood. And in the end, that bites him in the ass where he actually does get killed by Jason and no one believes him. He comes in, his neck is slit, and this one lady is like, I'll oh, stop it, Shelly. And in doing so, yeah, it bites him in the ass. He's also the person to give, you know, Jason his goddamn mask. So that, there's that. He's a physical. Christine, again, she's fine as a character. She is quite a bit of a badass, I will say. She just kicked Jason's ass in the end where it's her versus Jason and she like hungs him and like kick, like beats him with the boards and shit. It's actually like, oh, she's actually fighting back. This is cool. And the, the biker gang, they're, they're there to be assholes. I only remember them because they're there to be assholes. Again, I was kind of tunnel. Again, I do like this movie quite a bit. I do think it's good. I enjoy it for how, not ridiculous, but well, it is ridiculous on the 3D part, but they do have arcs for a few characters, even though one does make goddamn sense with Christine and then Shelly being Boy Who Cried Wolf. I do like that. Some people, I do know that. They don't like him. I, I, get, I get it. He, he could be annoying, but again, his whole thing is a uh, Boy Who Cried Wolf, so I didn't mind it. There are 3D kills with the whole handstand thing and the arrow thing. Those were fun as well. And oh god, and that like her, her boyfriend killed the Rick one where it's clearly a dummy. The eyes pop out. <laughs> And it's like, God, like, I wonder what audience thought about that back in 1982. Clearly, I mean, I'm gonna assume they saw it and it was fake. There's no way they believed this shit was real, right? But the eye just pops out, it goes in your face. It's hilariously bad, but also ridiculous. Like, it was actually, I remember thinking, okay, this is dumb. But thinking about it now, it's, it's like fun dumb, you know? And then, oh God, another reason as to why I drew this one is that awful acting of the one crackhead lady. There's this couple, right? They're like smoking crack. They're just smoking all day, every day, right? So her boyfriend dies somewhere. I forgot. And then when, it, when it's her turn to die and she finds out Shelly's actually dead, his neck is slit in the throat. This actress, oh, I need to, what's her name? Her acting is so bad. It's so spot on. It's just, it's comical at one point. I'm gonna, I'm gonna like fucking spice up a clip in here of her just so-called acting in Tation Mark and being scared. And it's, God, it's hilarious. It's so much fun to watch. But yeah, kind of the, the kooky and some bad of this movie maybe you can enjoy it quite a bit honestly it's it was was it dull it did feel dull at, at some points like uh, christine and her boyfriend rick are do, they're doing like farming work i don't care about that shit but it, it's like the bad acting and the bad like 3d effects and all the popcorns popping in your face and yo-yo in your face boy cried wolf all that was fun all fun and good game so yeah we get her versus jason kick his ass for a bit right she's, she's still powerful but she does kick his ass hangs him he decides to kick off his max at point she's like i know you but that's bullshit because continuity is dumb in this movie but puts mask back on she so-called defeats him and she just, just like with alice she's on a boat canoe whatever she sees jason starts running out and she starts freaking out starts going away and then guess what happens something stupid pamela voris who's raw and skin or whatever pops out grabs her pushes her into the lake turns out Guess what, guys? Shocker. It's a goddamn dream. So surprised. It's been renewed fucking three times. Yeah, and then the movie ends with her walking around with that cops. Uh, with her, well, she axed Jason on the head, which gives him his iconic little cut or axe wedge on the left side of his mask. Or the, from our perspective, his right side, but from his perspective, his, his left side of the mask where it has an axe like chip on it. That's where uh, he gets it. And the shot ends with that. And she goes around being crazy or whatever. So yeah, despite this movie ending the same way, feeling very formulaic like the first two. 
do. It still was entertaining and fun with oh, how bad it was. So yeah, overall, Friday the 13th Part 3 3D is, is good. I like I like the bad acting of the one scene, the bads, the few bad 3D effects, and most of the 3D effects were hilarious. Popcorn popping out of your face and your screen and yo-yos. That was a lot of fun. Christine the fire girl kicking Jason's ass for, for a bit and the ending was quite fun to watch because, you know, it's so formula because, okay, she's going to run away, you know, whatever. But when Rick dies, it's like, oh shit, what's she going to do? And she actually kicks his ass. I like the Shelly character bringing their mess to Jason and playing Boy Who Cried Wolf. Some of the characters are likable, but I'm forgetting their goddamn name. I'm so sorry, but I just got to forget their names. They're so fucking forgettable. And some of them are good. Like the crack couple, Shelly, the girl that Shelly's supposed to be dating, and like her as well. And that's it. But yeah, I, I actually enjoy this one. I, I can see why people, as to why people don't like this. It's not everyone, you know, cup of tea of 3D, but as someone who enjoys goofy, ridiculous fun and bad, hilarious acting, this one was a lot of fun. It was actually good. Next is Friday 13th, the final chapter. Quotation marks, the final chapter.